If you haven't had a chance to go over the latest federal budget, then don't worry, I've got you covered. In today's video, we are going to take a deep dive into the federal budget and how it is likely to affect the housing market and what we should expect going forward. The government's love affair with property is definitely still alive and well, and there are quite a few renewals of existing schemes as well as some additional schemes to keep the property market pumping, as well as tax cuts for everyday Australians and some generous programs that will have an indirect effect on the housing market. Before we begin, I just want to make it clear that this is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. These are simply my personal opinions and personal strategies and I will always encourage you to do your own research and due diligence before deciding to jump into any big financial or investment decisions. Let's start by talking about the current dilemma that we find ourselves in. With property prices reaching record highs in pretty much every corner of Australia, there are some serious affordability issues surfacing and the government has to now address these growing issues. However, they can't do this by implementing legislation that's going to lead to a drop in house values or a decrease in consumer sentiment because the Australian economy is still actually quite fragile after our most recent lockdowns. And we all know just how important the property market is to the Australian economy. The latest data released by the ABS shows that around 17% of Australia's GDP was directly linked to the construction and finance sectors. Not to mention the $8.1 trillion worth of Australian household wealth tied up in the real estate market. So we can see why the government has to be very careful when they introduce new policies that might have an effect on the housing market because a correction or a crash in the property market is going to have a significant effect on the Australian economy. Now, knowing all of that, what's the government's solution to address this affordability issue? Well, based on the federal budget, it seems like the government's solution for this affordability issue is to give out more loans and help more first home buyers get into the property market, encouraging young Australians to take up massive loans with a small deposit to get into the property market is quite a controversial topic. So I won't talk too much about it. But let's go over these generous government schemes in a bit more detail so you can form your own opinion on these. Let's start with the renewal of the first home loan deposit scheme. This scheme was first introduced back in January 2020 and it has been a great success. It provided first home buyers with some confidence and assistance in a time of uncertainty. And it could be argued that it helped with bringing confidence back into the market when we needed it the most. From the 1st of July 2021, another 10,000 spots will be offered for first home buyers to help them get into the property market with a little as a 5% deposit, with the government providing a guarantee to the lender of up to 15% of the loan. This means the buyers who apply for the scheme and get accepted can get into a property with only a 5% deposit deposits and not have to worry about paying lenders mortgage insurance. However, there are some limitations to this scheme. First of all, the buyers must have an income of less than $125,000 and there is a price cap on how much these buyers can spend with buyers being able to spend up to $700,000 in Sydney, which is well above the medium house price and up to $600,000 in Melbourne and Geelong which again is not going to get you very far if you're looking to buy a freestanding house in Melbourne or Geelong. Now let's move on and talk about the new home guarantee, which is pretty much a renewal of the home builder scheme and an extension of the first home loan deposit scheme. It allows the first home buyer to get into property with only a 5% deposit as long as that property is a newly built property, an offer plan property, a home and land package or an extensively renovated property, with the government once again providing a 15% guarantee to the lender. The scheme also gives buyers a higher cap on how much they can spend on a property because new homes usually cost quite a lot more than established homes. As we can see here, the cap for this scheme is up to $950,000 in Sydney and $850,000 in Melbourne, significantly higher than the 700 k and 600 k cap given to the buyers under the first home loan deposit scheme. The government will once again allocate 10,000 spots between 2021 and 2022. I just want to jump in here quickly and talk about buying an established home versus buying a new home. I'm going to start by saying that I'm quite biased when it comes to buying an established property because I don't see the point of paying 10, 20 or even 30% extra for a new home that's going to become old anyway after 20 or 30 years. I personally believe every property purchase should be treated as an investment and making the smarter move now is going to set you up for the future and give you and your family more options down the track. I know there are depreciation and stamp duty concessions when you buy a new property, 
but that is not enough to cover the 20 to 30 percent premium added to these properties let me know in the comment section below if this is a topic that you want to learn a bit more about and i'll make a more detailed video going over the advantages as well as the disadvantages of both new and established homes now if you think getting into a property with only a five percent deposit is crazy the government has just introduced another scheme that allows single parents with their dependent children to get into a property with only a 2% deposit. This is another extension of the first home loan deposit scheme and 10,000 spots will be allocated in the next four years starting on the 1st of July 2021. This scheme allows a single parent with dependent children to get into a property with only a 2% deposit with the government providing a guarantee to the lender for 18% of the loan. In total, the government will be providing assistance to 30,000 first home buyers over the next four years through the first home loan deposit scheme, the new home guarantee, and the family home guarantee. So how is this going to affect the property market going forward? Well, first of all, we need to get some context. Even though 30,000 sounds like a huge number, there were 40,000 new listings added to the market in April alone. And this trend of more properties coming on the market is likely to continue as homeowners cash in at record prices and take advantage of perfect selling conditions. However, I personally believe this is going to have a noticeable effect on the housing market and growth going forward because of a number of reasons. First of all, these generous government schemes is going to lead to an increase in buyer demand in a very competitive market. Despite a higher than usual number of listings hitting the market and this trend likely to continue, investor activity is also increasing. This increased level of investor activity combined with the demand generated by these schemes is likely to absorb these listings rather quickly. Another thing to think about is where all of this increased demand from first home buyers is likely to go. In my personal opinion, it will go more in towards the units or even apartment markets because let's be honest, the price caps on these government schemes is not going to be enough to get these first home buyers a property, a freestanding house in this expensive and competitive market. So most of these first home buyers will be forced into a townhouse or even apartment. Ultimately, the level of supply hitting the market in the coming months will determine what kind of property market we are heading into for the rest of 2021 and into 2022. Another important change made in the federal budget was the change to the First Home Super Saver Scheme. Under this scheme, first home buyers will be able to save for a deposit inside of the superannuation account at discounted tax rates. The most recent change to the scheme has increased the withdrawal limits from $30,000 to $50,000. And from the 1st of July 2022, they will be able to withdraw up to $50,000 as a deposit for a house. I have only gone over these schemes very briefly in this video, so I will strongly encourage you guys to do a bit more research into these schemes yourself if you're serious about applying for one of these schemes. All of these schemes are introduced by the government to help solve the affordability issue in Australia and that will help to an extent, but first home buyers will still be limited on what they can buy because of the overpriced nature of our property market. Now that we have talked about all the schemes that are directly targeting the property market, let's talk about some changes in the federal budgets that will have an indirect effect on the property market. The government has decided to continue the low and middle income tax offset, which will save most Australians between $225,000 to a bit over $1,000 a year, as well as a 12-month extension to the business write-off perks, which will allow businesses to write off the full value of any tangible assets like work vehicles and equipment. And most importantly, an additional $1.9 billion will be added to the already very well-funded COVID vaccine strategy over the next five years, as well as the government indicating they will set aside additional money to invest in vaccine production here in Australia. The tax savings, the tax write-offs, and the investment in vaccine production here in Australia are all great news. I believe this is going to have a positive effect on the housing market because we all know that when consumer confidence is high and when people in Australia have money to spend, they are likely to spend it on the property market. Even though I believe the current rate of growth will slow down, I believe all of this combined is going to lead to a long and sustained property boom over the next few years, likely until 2023 or even 2024 when the higher interest rates start to kick in. Another important discussion point from the federal budget is the reopening of our borders to tourism and immigration. When the previous budget was handed down in October, the government assumed that we will be reopening our borders towards the end of this year. However, after the international breakouts we saw in countries like India, and the slow than expected vaccine rollout, the government has announced that our borders will remain shut until at least mid next year. Look, this is something I completely agree with. 
we should not rush to reopen our borders until it is safe to do so. What is quite interesting is that when we reopen our borders next year, we will, in my personal opinion, see a lot of people migrating to Australia, which will be supported by the government because we have so much population growth to catch up on. Due to our borders being closed and our lockdowns, our population has actually decreased over the last two years. The influx of immigration that we are likely to see next year is going to put even more pressure on housing prices in Australia. And in my personal opinion, we are going to see the rate of growth even speed up when these borders are reopened. Furthermore, the 1st of July 2020 will be when the first home super saver scheme will be kicking in, meaning first home buyers can now take out an additional $20,000 to use as a deposit for a property. I believe this is going to put even more upward pressure on prices as first home buyers now come back into the market with a higher deposit for a bigger property. So in my personal opinion, if the government sticks to their plan of reopening our borders in mid-2022, we are going to see a huge spike in demand. And depending on how our supply levels are looking by this time next year, it could once again lead to a higher rate of growth in your property markets. Once again, this is not financial advice, but only my personal opinion. There will be a good opportunity to get into the property market in the next 6 to 12 months before higher demand put even more upward pressure on prices. This brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you guys got some value out of this video. Please let me know in the comment section below if you agree with everything I've said or if I missed anything. If you did get value out of this video, please do me a huge favor by hitting that like button right there and subscribing to the channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're looking for more investing content just like this, please feel free to follow me on my Instagram at investwithzeng. I wish you the very best on your investing journey and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.